Updating you on the latest details now across Britain and around the world, leaders and ordinary people are expressing shock and sadness over the death of Princess Diana. Uh, we got to London uh, early morning, and London was literally re uh, drawn with grief. Funeral took place in Westminster Abbey, so we had to work our way to there. Um, there were hundreds of thousands of people. When the neural funeral procession uh, headed to Abbey past us, uh, somebody in the crowd, uh, heartbroken voice, screamed Diana, Princess of Wales, and, and then everybody in the crowd started to cry, uh, even mad. It was a solemn moment. Washington, D.C., New York City, and the countdown on the East Coast is underway. Two thousand came along. You talk about a party. One of the things that CNN did when two thousand was some the new millennium, we went out and we put television cameras in each and every time zone around the world that we could. So what we did was we put somebody in each one of them and then we marked that for twenty four hours. We went around the world every time zone, marking the beginning of the new millennium. CNN right now is moving our earlier declaration of Florida back to the too close to call column. This just in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. I still remember when I was ready to go to bed that day, my colleague just caught in and told me, just turn on the television, there's something really shocking just happened. The United States was under attack. Unconfirmed report that a plane has crashed into one of the towers there. I remember sitting in my living room with my mom and dad when the first plane went into the World Trade Center. And it was at that point that we realized that the freedom and liberties that we'd come to enjoy as citizens of the world would no longer be the same. When I went downstairs, looking down from Madison Avenue and 51st Street, you could see the bloom of smoke. And um, after the towers fell, I started seeing people walking up from the World Trade Center area. That's something that I really will never forget. I felt the need to go downtown to Ground Zero. I had, I can't really explain it, but I, I had to go down there. It was just very touching and devastating at the same time since I'm a native New Yorker. These two police officers, one was uh, kneeling or, or squatting and the other one was just standing up looking. And it, it really, it really caught me emotionally because even they were looking for people that had perished and they were in uniform and, you know, it just seemed like they would always be okay and fine with everything and know what's going on. But that day was just horrific and nobody, really, nobody at all could, could make it better. So they, I think they found some healing in searching for their loved ones and their, and their people that they worked with. Here aboard the USS Abraham Lincoln, life has completely changed. The talk around here is not if the U.S. is going to war, but when. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq to free its people and to defend the world in great danger. This is World News on CNN International, but we also uh, welcome our friends at CNN USA who will join us for our continuing coverage of the major earthquake which has triggered killer tsunamis in at least six South Asian nations. I was at home. Just then we received a um, uh, telephone call on our landline saying that sea was washing ashore causing much calamity. It sounded fiction to me because me and Sri Lanka have not heard of such a natural disaster ever before. Giant waves gulping the tangible. Just six days uh, later I visited down south of Sri Lanka, Gaul again to see what was happening. Shocking was the sight of all buildings just lying about in a mess. 
It was the most dreadful thing I've ever witnessed in my life. The word that we now have confirmed is that Carol Watiwa, Pope John Paul II, has died. I was watching all the news from Rome, hoping that the time still hasn't come. A moment which writes history, or a moment when a man with a special charisma is going away. When they said he's no longer alive, I was sitting in front of the TV, feeling empty. Every person is hereby ordered to immediately evacuate the city of New Orleans. Tonight, because of what we did on this day, in this election, at this defining moment, change has come to America. I was serving as a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco. I was walking around town. Everybody, even the strangers, came up to me and were like, congratulations, he won, we're so excited. One of the shopkeepers that I'm, I was pretty good friends with him, he was a nice guy. Um, he came up to me and in Berber he was like, like Jack, which sounds like he won. And I said, yeah, yeah, he won, I'm excited. Um, and he stopped me and he was like, no, 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 I didn't say he won. I said, we won. We are continuing to follow breaking news out of India's financial capital, what appear to be a series of coordinated terror attacks at several locations in Mumbai, including two tourist hotels. Um, and dealing with... Okay, all right. Um, I... I have to admit, I saw the city of my youth, in a sense, being ravaged by terror. In those 72 hours, Mumbai was helpless. It was violated. Not that it hadn't seen terror and violence before, but this was something different. With each grenade that exploded, there was an innocence of an era that was lost. Michael Jackson, 50 years old, the king of pop, has died. Uh, a very, very sad moment. I'm just devastated. Michael Jackson uh, is very special. Michael Jackson was a complicated human being who was neglected a childhood in order to provide us with great musical and dance and entertainment. But with all his wealth and success, he never seemed happy with himself. This is CNN Breaking News. Tonight from Port-au-Prince, Haiti, the epicenter of this uh, horrible earthquake which has struck here uh, more than 24 hours ago. The images of Haiti still rings in my mind the memory because seeing so many bodies, dead bodies everywhere, under the, the, the houses, broken, everything, and I really feel so, so bad. There are a lot of structures everywhere that are dangerous, that need to come down. There are states of destruction and disrepair. The street, I've never seen anything like this. Look at this. It's just, it is just complete devastation. This is downtown Port-au-Prince. Just a few blocks from the presidential palace, just about a block from the National Cathedral, which is, it, itself is pretty much destroyed. So every street we turn on looks like this, downtown. There's destruction everywhere, and people are just moving on. Life moves on. People are functioning, moving forward, in the middle of all this debris. After nearly three weeks trapped underground in northern Chile, 33 miners managed to send a note to the surface saying, we're still alive. Keep piece of machinery, part of the machine. It will be possible to drill a hole down to the shelter 700 meters in the ground where the miners are. It's now being moved into place. Look at this. This is actually from inside the mine. A live image of the capsule entering the mine for the first time. Extra. 